Hi everyone, thank you for checking out my videos and uh, today I'm going to bring you a, uh, a new system that I'm testing and why I say it's new is not really, uh, it is dated back to late 1970 to maybe early 1980 and it is uh, Pacific Fast Mail Sound System 2. And as that given, there's Sound System 1, and which is a much simpler system compared to, or much uh, less option system compared to what you have seen here. And uh, back in the day, it is the one and only sound system available in the early 19, 1980s. And uh, at that time, that is not like what we have enjoyed today with the DCC system. And uh, it takes a lot of effort to make the, the mini actress trains to make sound. And uh, as you can see here, that's uh, compared to our DCC consoles today, it's pretty uh, large in terms of the size of the console and uh, compare uh, to a HO engine up there, you can tell how big it is. And uh, it is operate uh, strictly on um, uh, analog. And that is additional fun part of the system is the sound is very different. I think the reason you check out this video is very likely uh, that you have heard a lot of good thing about this Pacific Fast Mail sound system. And that is the very reason I bought this one. And uh, because simply I read the review online and I want to hear it. And because I don't know if that's true. A lot of people uh, uh, vote for it. And I simply want to hear it uh, personally in order to, 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 you know, uh, to, to, to do that. And I would say uh, after some early testing, I would, I'm impressed with the sound quality that the Pacific Fast Mail sound system can produce. And uh, it has a lot of limitation, uh, believe it or not, not compared to the DC system today. And um, so the demo today simply want to show you what are the options available, a quick intro of the system, and uh, some quick demo on how this, the the locomotives and the system sound, okay? So uh, so here is uh, the, a quick intro of the, the major component of the PFM sound system two, which we have the control console here with uh, uh, four main blocks of uh, controls. To your left, you can see that is the control for the exhaust and then follow to the right, you have at the, at the, up, uh, uh, at the uh, upper part, you will see there's a lot of features and including the bells and uh, the, the com air compressors, coupling, that's a central. And the lower part, you will see uh, the section dedicated for uh, uh, whistles and uh, hissing sound. And uh, there's a lot of fine tune there, so you can see a dip switches there. And that's really helpful for if you want to fine tune the sound. And to your right, and that is actually the throttle with the directional switch, and as well as the accelerator, decelerator. So that is the, the main component of the PFM system. And the, the, the lower part of it is actually three cassette deck. Uh, it's actually a cassette deck cassette consists of uh, three uh, sits for the cassettes and it's connected via cables to the rear of the PFM system as I can see there it's a three separate plugs and uh, our uh, parallels connect to the cables from the cassette deck to the unit and those dedicate for one purpose which is uh, uh, for the function part, so this part. You know, I think each of the cassette have the recording of a certain part of it. Like for example, maybe cassette number one is for generator, uh, bells and blowers, and uh, cassette two for the air pumps and couplings, and cassette three for wheel noises, okay? 
and uh, back in the day actually the players available uh, separately you can you, there's a equipment available it's cassette available just a, a section of it and uh, at the early time you can actually buy three separate cassette players and connect it to the the unit separately and later on they have this one unit we can put three cassette in there one time okay and uh, the third components here is that a reverb unit actually it's a dedicated unit for the whistles and with this unit it, the sound of from the of the whistle be, uh, will be uh, you will feel that more airy and more realistic and we will uh, do a quick demo later to uh, show you the difference okay so right now to turn on the the system is one switch here so that's turn on the the main console and for cassette deck you actually you know push start for every and each of them once you push start this light uh, will come on i'm not sure if that's even led and maybe precedes led but anyway so so now the system is on and uh, you start with here is a uh, uh, main volume and I, I turned that to the max so even with max the sound is still not that loud however uh, actually so uh, so that is something uh, uh, we will explain that later so the engine here uh, it is uh, May is a uh, Santa Fe uh, 3500 series Pacific and uh, made by Hallmark uh, Dongjin and uh, in Korea. And the sound unit was installed in the tender. Actually, there's a speaker in there and there's some uh, electronics units in there. And in the, uh, and the boiler, there is uh, the wiring uh, connect to the, uh, uh, the motor and also some uh, electric components connected in there. So my boat engine is already come with the PFM system stored actually. So I got engine long before I have the sound system. So just a quick note that if you have an engine that's come with a PFM sound system installed, you actually have the option just running on regular DC. Simply is there's a wire. You can see there was a wire connecting the tender and the engine, you just need to unplug it, and then the engine is perfect, perfectly fine, just running on DC mode, but there's no sound, okay? So that is about uh, the, the, the engine that I was using for this demo. And just a quick note that if you buy the PFM module for, some module for the, the engine, it actually comes with a, a constant light um, uh, controller. So basically, you just some just like a constant head, uh, for uh, I should say for headlight installation, that's a constant light and that's pretty handy. And I did it, it was not installed on this engine, but I do have several modules. Um, uh, I'm gonna install that at a later time, and uh, with the lights or features, I'm gonna put, put it in as well. Okay. So now let's get started. First easiest part will be just. I want to show how everybody how how to you know spin the wheels. So simply uh, uh, gradually open the throttle. So this engine got a uh, uh, cam motor in there, and just if you're curious, and I have several engines actually have the PFM sound system installed, and uh, several of them actually have the old style open frame motor. It actually works fine uh, with the PFM sound system. You don't need to replace that with a cam motor in order to work with the, the PFM sound system. So, so if you have a engine in good condition, you really love, like it, but it comes with a, 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 a open frame motor, maybe you would like to use a PFM system, a, a PFM sound module on it, and actually can, you know, still have that vintage engine come with very decent sound, all right? 
And here you have a uh, accelerator and decelerator and with the throttle. It is not as uh, uh, functional or not, not as uh, 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 such a fine control compared to our DCC system today. So DCC system is really uh, uh, much advanced in terms of motor control. And this one, you know, if I turn on the momentum for deceleration, and okay, let me turn on the speed to higher speed. And close the throttle. Now you can uh, you can observe the deceleration, especially toward the end. It is not as smooth as you can find on the PCC system. Okay, now we put it back on. So there are some uh, review online that you actually can fine tune the electronics and I don't have that knowledge, but uh, it's through some uh, uh, different design or arrangement you can actually, you know, achieve a better acceleration, deceleration characteristics through the PFM systems. And if you want to get more information, feel free to check online and hopefully you can find some useful information there. Okay, next is for the chops. So there are four options for the chop. So you can control the chop volume independently on top of the main volume here. And you can also control the Doppler effect, <coughs> especially when you go through tunnel. You can change the tone of the exhaust and also the cutoff. So let's start with the volume here. Effect. Like this one, we just on the plain field, trains running on the open field, and then when they enter into the tunnels, you can start to hear the, the reflection or uh, reverb from the, the, the walls of the tunnel. It's making it more realistic. And then come up. Okay. And you can also change the tone of the, the chops. So from the very dual to every very light and dark. As, and that's as a cutoff. It's you can determine the the cutoff the, of the sound of the sound wave or signal wave. So to feel our unwanted noise. So these are the controls for the chops. And the next one is uh, the whistle and the hissing sound. So the hissing sound is actually very straightforward. It just down. Uh, Okay. And there's a heat volume, actually it's not for controlling the hissing sound. The heat volume actually used for control the hissing when you whistle. Okay. For example, if I turn on the hissing volume, you will hear more hissing pressure compared to turn it off. Almost less hissing, okay? So that's for hissing. And the next is uh, the whistles. So whistles, you have three type of control. One is the activation. The next one is the, the, the pitch or the, the tone of the whistle from the very low. 
very high. Also medium. And too high. And you can also control the tone of the engine. And the PFM value actually gives you some quick reference. You know, with different combination here. You can actually play the beat switch and then match the sound you have for your locomotive. One thing here is uh, the reverb function. Actually, it's a dedicated function for the whistle. Okay, so this actually uh, have to do with the reverb unit as we mentioned earlier. So right now it's connected. So let's play the, 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 the whistle with the reverb on. So now is like try without reverb, turn it off completely. Compare to turn on the reverb maximum. So more realistic, more airy. And you can hear the resonance in the mountains with the whistle uh, transmission transmitting. Okay. So here is a, a, a separate set of functions. You can see we have you know uh, for the air pumps. So the air compressors you have a cross compound single stage and dual stage right and uh, let's try with the close compound it's analog control you can check the volume of each Let's try single stage. All right, then dual stage. Next are the bells. There are a total of three types of uh, two types of bell and one air winner. So the for bell number one. So it sounds still more like uh, like uh, digital tones instead of the actual bell like what we can hear in the, the new uh, our, our our recent DCC system. But I think the bell 2 is a little bit better. Okay, then the air winner. So the next set is a generator. It's just a high pitch. Generator sound, as you can hear from the this function. It's simply a high pitch noise, and then the blower. The next one is coupling.
Well, it sounds like a coupling, but it can also mean maybe water tower, you know, replen replenish water. It mighty sounds like that as well. All right, we can call it either way. All right, the next set is a set of, you know, noise, wheel noise, and from the slow speed, medium speed it's more simulates when the trains running and of course fast I really believe this is somehow some guys you know stand next to the track and start recording and record that into cassette and that's what this control coming from right so just one side note is this functions is independent so like say if you keep the engine uh, off completely okay and this sound will still functioning And the chops and the control and only activated when the throttle is on and that that is no brainer but just worth mention all right so here just uh, 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 my quick uh, intro of the system I still I still in uh, uh, you know exploration mode try to learn more about the system the potentials and uh, the any modifications might be able to helpful to improve the sound quality of the system. What I learned from the manual is actually it has a module available separately that can connect it to a subwoofer that's absolutely adding more fun to the to the the, the experience of the of the system. And uh, I don't I haven't found that unit yet. Hopefully I can find it one day and at the time and i can do another re video to compare the differences and share with you guys man hopefully you enjoy this video and um and i think that's uh, uh if you got a chance you know with uh, to find a system like this feel free to share with us and uh hope you enjoy this vintage but a new experience of the the locomotive sound and thank you see you next time